Welcome everyone to Mission Innovation powered by AWS. Uh, in this episode, we'll be talking a little bit about digital engineering with one of our top partners, uh, SEIC. My name is Luis Felipe Briar Paliano de Jesus. I go by Felipe and I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS. I specifically uh, support uh, SEIC. Um, and speaking of SEIC, we have a gentleman by the name of uh, Andrew Fisher who joined me. Andrew, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, so Andrew Fisher, uh, I'm part of the SEIC's Innovation Factory. Uh, I'm responsible for the digital engineering solutions uh, for SEIC and specifically the ReadyOne product that we'll be talking about today. So let's go right into it, Andrew. Um, what are some of the key engineering challenges um, that federal agencies are facing that led to the development of ReadyOne? Yeah, so from an SEIC standpoint, for the last 10 years or so, you know, starting from the DoD, and, uh, DoD strategy that came out, we understood digital engineering was the way to go with traditional systems engineering. And so what we did was had to come up with a concept of how do we get more people adopting digital engineering practices? So starting from an enterprise mindset, I think is the first part of that is how do we get more people to adopt similar processes? And so creating an enterprise capability was the first thing. And the way of doing that was we needed to decrease and uh, really reduce the barrier to entry for accessing some of this uh, very technical, very difficult engineering software to get either installed locally on local computers or to have on on-prem networks and systems uh, with the maintenance and operations of it. So overall mindset of how do we get a centralized version of it so everyone can use it. And, and tell me a little bit more why you chose AWS initially. So we were on our on-prem network in our SEIC data center. And um, one of the things about being on, on uh, bare metal or virtualized bare metal is that it's sometimes difficult to be agile and to be able to grow and develop um, at the pace that you want to um, just because there is limitations. And so uh, that was one of the main core reasons why we needed to look at cloud computing and looking at our um, cloud service providers that are available. Uh, AWS was ready and ready to go, and uh, having the Gov Cloud option back in um, you know five seven years ago um, available to us that we can easily get an account created um, was what we were excited for. So we knew our data uh, would be safe on a platform like that, and so uh, migrating from an on-prem uh, infrastructure to a cloud-provided infrastructure was the right decision. Gotcha. And, and so you mentioned that you built it from the ground up on AWS, but how has it evolved since then, right? Where, how did you get to that journey from where you started to where we are today? Yeah, so, you know, starting back the team, you know, as we decided to go towards cloud computing and, and cloud service providers, specifically AWS, um, really the team was a very small team. So it doesn't have to be a large team. Uh, we had about three folks, um, three full-time uh, people working on it. Um, and it was a simple migration. It wasn't a big time effort. Really what it was is taking the typical engineering software, uh, creating one account. Just all we needed was the first account in AWS and we had that account. So we started building just simple network architectures, one VPC, um, and to just to deploy simple EC2s. And that was the first way of doing this. Just getting EC2s there, installing software to confirm that this, uh, these, these high-powered engineering software was available to be working in a cloud environment. Some of the commercial vendors uh, haven't necessarily gone there yet at the time, and so we wanted to make sure that it was performance and, and operational from a cloud perspective. Um, from to where it is now, we've, over the last five years, like I mentioned, we've, uh, we've grown uh, to 50 AWS services, uh, leveraging AWS organization to have nine different account structures. Uh, we, our team has grown from the three that I talked about to uh, 15 plus people, and that's talking about having help desk people, having cyber people, scrum masters for a development effort. So it truly is a full production operation environment at this point uh, where we really are building solutions and products that we can take to the commercial market. Um, and one of the things I would say is along the way, you know, working with AWS, it's been very helpful is, you know, making that environment more uh, more operational, higher performance. Uh, so one of the things was going through the well-architected framework with you, with you specifically and other AWS folks uh, to make sure that our account was actually built the right way. 
Yeah, no, and, and obviously, as you've alluded to, we've been working together on Ready One for about a year and a half to two years now. So, and I've seen the growth personally, right? And I've loved, I've loved every minute out of it. But let's kind of shift gears and talk a little bit about that AWS and SAIC partnership yeah. and how it's gotten closer over the years, right? So most recently, um, you started leveraging um, innovation sandbox funding, um, and also we've introduced the concept of the AWS SAIC co-builds where we're working even more closely together on yeah. um, solutions like Ready One. Um, so that was incorporated last year. How, has th how have those elements further accelerated Ready One's development? Yeah, so before the, the, these partnerships and these opportunities came to us when we were operating in AWS, you know, one of the things was it was obvious is that um, we were all novice cloud engineers that we were slowly learning the cloud as we went along. So it was, you know, like building the car as you're driving it, which is quite frightful. So uh, we weren't efficient with our build plans. Uh, we were missing out on uh, test and research capabilities that we could go after and go do. So with the, with the, the further support and partnership with AWS, um, you know, leading to the decision to go to, to a true AWS organizational uh, account structure to to separate, you know, our production and development accounts and having a security and utility accounts to really separate and demarcate all of the different uh, services that we're leveraging to create a, a secure and uh, uh, high performance operation uh, of an enterprise ecosystem. Uh, and then, like you mentioned, sandbox credits, you know, I can't uh, thank them enough for the ability to have sandbox credits because what it allows us to do is it allows us to go and test and research those new capabilities that we want to do in, in digital engineering. And it's expensive to to go and do it um, and invest in those cloud compute resources on your own. So when you have a partner like AWS who's willing to give you sandbox credits to go and test those things and get to a, a, a true MVP state uh, before, you know, having that deep dive investment into it is is one thing I, I can't think enough. Um, and some of those things that have come out of Sandbox Credits, there's you know, our Ready One training environment. That's a hands-on lab that we've developed at SCIC that is a full digital engineering digital thread that we can take to our customers, but also use internally um, and have them just be hands-on and learn on how to use these tools before they get in a true production setting or before they truly invest in doing a full digital engineering digital threat approach. No, I mean, that's, that's awesome to hear, right? And, and and one of the things we've always been at AWS is, is customer obsessed, right? So these are some of the many ways that we try to show that to our customers. And so I'm glad to hear that it, with us together, that yeah. that's how we've been moving forward on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, you know, you've talked around uh, this a little bit, but let's uh, let's shift gears a bit and dive a little bit more deeply into Ready One's uh, AWS architecture. So walk us through how you're leveraging AWS services uh, to address the federal challenges that we've been chatting on. Yeah. So for our legacy applications, a lot of our engineering software, you know, we're still sometimes stuck with just traditional EC2 deployments. But um, that being said, there are, you know, a lot of things that we have to do with those things. So, you know, cybersecurity and data security is one of the most important things with it. So having access to those updated operating systems and automated patching services through service manager or abilities to uh, have monitoring capabilities uh, through service manager, those are things that um, yes, we're in more of those traditional infrastructure settings, but there's capabilities there that we need to have to be secure. And then um, I would say, I would add on to that, top of that, like building that infrastructure, using things like CloudFormation, that's where we started is using infrastructure as code through CloudFormation to build out this infrastructure rapidly. And that's the origin story of Ready One is how do we rapidly deploy these capabilities. And so now moving into more of, you know, EKS mode and containerization and getting these applications when they're available to be containerized from the vendors, getting to that so that we can, you know, really buy down on what it takes to get these into hands of our customer and, and quicker so we can make better decisions. Yeah, no, that, that's, um, that's, that's fantastic to hear. And I know, I know that we've worked together on a number of these. Um, did you have anything that you wanted to mention around um, Research and Engineering Studio and how that's enabled um, your digital engineering and digital thread? Yeah, so what we're doing with Research Engineering Studio is it's, it's high performance computing. So it allows us to create these profiles, these environments that uh, engineers can get into and leverage uh, these better processing times. You know, a lot of these uh, 
a lot of these tools that we have are they're very powerful tools, but they're only as good as the the infrastructure and the computers that you're putting them on. And so, you know, traditional thick client laptops or desktops that we have in our normal working setting isn't enough. And so moving to the cloud and specifically even moving into high computing um, parts of the cloud is is needed for these new advanced um, capabilities, the modeling simulation runs, uh, AI models and things like that. So uh, really leveraging Res to, to get us to a place where we can create profiles so that users can immediately get into something and the things are already there provisioned um, for them to just immediately lose. So again, kind of hinting on that, reducing that barrier to entry to just getting access to those things. Fantastic. So we're already kind of on the topic of data. So let's talk a little bit about data management. Would you mind deep diving a little bit into ReadyOne's data management pipeline across multiple different simulations, how that's handled, what ReadyOne brings to the table on that? Yeah, so the the core at ReadyOne is our full lifecycle digital thread. So what that is, is we've taken a traditional PLM uh, solution, commercial solution, Eris Innovator, um, and with their open API and, and open source, uh, we've we've added what we call the SEIC data model on top of it. And so what that does is that creates new work processes um, for digital engineering purposes, but then on with it paired with either third-party connectors from commercial vendors or in-house uh, connectors that we've created at SEIC, uh, those connectors go out and reach to domain-specific engineering tools, whether that be, you know, CAD, me mechanical CAD, electrical CAD, or, you know, requirements engineering. So all ac across the life cycle, really connecting in, pulling those data sources in to have a one authoritative source of truth and being able to see it in one tool and be able to, to, to view that true data fabric and thread on how everything is incorporated together. Fantastic, and, and tell me a little bit, um, how has uh, AWS helped enable that connectivity and, and pulling that thread across? Yeah, so one of the things is our developmental process. So having the ability to spin up resources quickly. So um, our uh, data model integration and the way that we do um, our RAID development is, you know, we spin up resources for, you know, SIT and then go into UAT. The only way we'd be able to be efficient with those and be able to have, you know, quarterly releases is through cloud computing and be able to rapidly deploy and rapidly spin up these environments. So we can test out our build. We can have our user community come into it and do user acceptance testing and write up any of the bugs that we have. It really fast tracks that ability to have automation build outs. And that's what we've done and leveraged AWS services for that. So let's put the focus back on the customer. Um, how is digital engineering and the digital thread um, and, and ReadyOne specifically transform complex engineering projects for federal agencies? Yeah, so the first thing is I'll, you know, re-hint at, you know, being ready on day one of execution. Um, and what that allows us to do is as you go through the system lifecycle, you're going to have to have rapid prototyping and having that ability to do rapid prototyping. And when you do have faults or bugs, you'd be able to look at the actual digital thread and be able to identify, OK, what requirements are we failing on and what are the downstream elements that is causing these effects? Uh, it allows you to get in, understand where those that data is, make those changes to the design, and reiterate and come back with a better prototype. So instead of having to go traditionally, where you have to go through the entire life cycle, go to manufacturing and production to build out to do your first test on an actual field that's asset, we'll have the ability to do modeling and simulation runs to understand a lot of those problems before it's actually built and designed. So we've been talking about. Um the pipeline and the digital thread a little bit, but let's get a little bit more technical about the workflow automation capabilities that, that enable that. How does ReadyOne streamline engineering processes today? And where are you working uh, with AWS to continue to improve these capabilities? Yeah, so uh, the first thing is with our Ares Innovator digital thread, well, what we've done is we've custom built that so that we've had, we have the ability to create connectors and that allows us to um, be more efficient with what we're trying to go for and trying to do with, with our engineering profile. And then another thing is kind of hinting back at the research and engineering studio with some of our modeling and simulation work specifically, you know, building out those profiles that when a user comes in, they have a profile that's built out. It's a configuration managed 
modeling and simulation environment. So when they do a specific run, they know that they're going to get an output and they can then that gets put brought back into the digital thread. If anything downstream happens and they need to go and rerun that analysis, that modeling and simulation environment, they can go and re-spin up that exact profile before to understand, okay, what were the inputs and what were the outputs so they can understand, okay, these variables need to change and so that we can get a better outcome, things like that. So having all of the, everything across the digital thread configuration controlled um, allows us to do better performance in modeling and simulation and res being one of the things with the high compute allows us to do it faster and more efficiently. So you've already driven it home for me, but out of curiosity for, for the folks who are, who are watching at home, um, can you quantify the efficiency gains and operational improvements that you've seen with agencies um, that have leveraged these automation features? Yeah, absolutely. So for the feedback that we've gotten so far from our government customers, as well as from our SCIC programs and program managers, um, what we've seen is that um, you know upwards of a 9x return on some of our um, full-time equivalent staff and labor. So uh, essentially what we're trying to do is really um, increase that efficiency from our users. And if they're not having to write documents anymore, if they're not having to sit there and wait for a computer to load something, or and they're not having to bang their head on a keyboard to install software, that's what we want. The, our engineers to be avoiding. And so having getting them into tools immediately and working purely in their engineering field is what we want. And so, yeah, that 9x return is what we're already seeing uh, over the last couple of years. That's great to hear. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's great to hear. So um, I've already been working with you on this, so, so I already know, but let's shift gears a bit and, and focus on the future. Yeah. Um, AI ML in general, and particularly Gen AI, has been revolutionizing our industry and many different industries. How is the Ready One team in particular leveraged AIML today? And what are the future plans to use Gen AI to enhance these engineering decisions? Yeah, so two different things for, for that is um, leveraging large language models. One of the first one is, uh, like I was referring to, getting our engineers out of the minutia and out of the things. When we take over a program, we get a lot of data. A lot of data gets come, sent to us and we have to parse through it all. We have to understand what the data is. And then we have to either manually load it or if some if things are similar, we can batch load it. But it's all very manual, intensive, labor intensive process. Using large language models, really using them to parse through the data to really understand, OK, what is in this data package and separate it all separate it out. So having computer do a lot of that minutia uh, is our first thing. And then the second thing is, is how do we then take these tools and how do we embed uh, an author embed in authoring tools some of these language models to provide user acknowledgement and guidance to say hey you know i'm not necessarily a subject matter expert but with this tool and i can ask it questions and it can tell me how to build things you know i can make a novice either at least an inter intermediate intermediary or an advanced uh, engineer those are the things to really try to make your fte go from a 1x to like a 10x accelerator. And so that's what we're we're looking forward to doing with uh, with our Gen AI capabilities. All right, Andrew. So we talked about it a bunch of different things. Um, last question, and I promise you'll like this one. Um, you know, for any agencies that are interested in Ready One, you know, what's involved in implementing it? How do you ensure successful adoption and how do they get started? Yeah, so I'd first say uh, start with the AWS marketplace. Uh, our uh, commercial products are listed there. <laughs> Uh, so one of the, the first things is Ready One Foundational. So all the Ready One that we've been talking about today, um, our commercial product, Ready One Foundational, is that digital thread backbone uh, with our SCIC data model, in, including um, all of our various connectors to domain-specific engineering software. That's available in the marketplace um, that we come in and deploy these uh, this software and these things on your network, make it available. It's yours. Um, we do a little bit of help desk support and make sure that you guys are the, the customers off and running um, and to make it a smooth transition there. Uh, the next thing I'd say is the ability to have our SEAC subject matter experts come in and really wrap you in hyper care. And what we do for that is it's what we call our digital engineering jump packages. And that's truly digital engineering subject matter ex experts come to you at a firm fixed price with des design deliverable. So it's scoped ahead of time to say, these are the outcomes that we're looking to achieve. This is the firm fixed price. This team would come in, provide that hypercare, provide those outcomes, and, and then they would leave at that time. So I wanna really thank you again um, for coming out and, and chatting with me. And I'm really looking forward to all the stuff that we're working to continue build together, um, both you and I in AWS and SAIC. And I just wanna let everybody else know um, 
for information on how to get in contact and other relevant links, uh, you can uh, click below. Um, but it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you, Andrew, and it's, I hope everyone who's uh, been watching has gotten a lot out of this as well. Uh, look forward to the next episode that we do, maybe another SAIC one. Absolutely. Thanks, Felipe. Thank Appreciate you, Andrew. It.